Today, I'm going to teach you how to make an apple hydromel, which is a low ABV apple mead. So let's get started. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today we're making an apple hydromel. It is a light or low ABV mead. It is generally below 7%. This is one of many hydromels I'm going to make um, in part of a series that is basically a hydromel making series and I'm making four different ones. At the end of all four of those videos, I'm going to do a flight night where I taste test all four of those meads with some friends. It'll be pretty fun. So go check out the other recipes um, as you see this one. Today is the apple hydromel. Here's your recipe right up here. We are using 7 eighths of a gallon of water, about 1.25 pounds of honey, and then, uh, this is a packet of Lauvin EC1118. It is a champagne slash wine yeast that does really well for preserving honey character, in my opinion. Um, and then in the secondary, after the primary fermentation, we're gonna add, this is three pounds of apples. These are sweet tango apples, and I will talk about how to use those. That's my recipe. Making, uh, hydromels are really nice and easy to make. I really enjoy getting to make them because they're cheaper and they always might have turned out pretty good. So let's talk about everything you need. You're gonna need some stuff to sanitize. This is uh, sanitizing water. So it's star sands what I use. I mix in the star sand with water. I sanitize everything I use, carboys, equipment, all that stuff. You're gonna need your honey, your water, your yeast, of course, and a hydrometer, um, a tube of some sort or tall, container to float your hydrometer in. Maybe something to stir if you you know want to stir, that's a stirring rod. In the secondary, you'll need a racking cane and um, in the future, bottling wand, all that stuff. We are also gonna use a couple extra ingredients. We're gonna use some acid blend to help to balance out some of the body of this mead and possibly some maltodextrin, which is again, a body filler to make this feel fuller. Here's what I did. I've already mixed in my recipe. I'll put it on the screen right here. I went ahead and I did four gallons because I'm making all four of these meads and I'm gonna take out one gallon here in a second, mixed in my honey and my water. And so that's what I have right here. We are gonna go ahead now and move over a little bit of this into this container and we'll start the fermentation process. Okay, I've moved over my gallon of my hydromel. One thing we need to do after you've mixed everything is take a gravity reading. So let me go ahead and do that. Looking at your hydrometer in your tube or whatever you floated in, um, you should have a differing gravity than 1.000. 1.000 is water. So when you add sugar, it increases the gravity. This right now is 1.004. I'm sorry, 1.040. So we're looking at roughly about a 5% ABV mead currently whenever uh, when it ferments through however in the secondary when i add my apples we are going to add sugars naturally to this it's a little bit hard to know exactly how much sugar you've added when you add apples in because it doesn't exactly change the gravity so i am leaving room underneath seven percent just in case there are enough sugars in this to possibly push it over seven percent i want it to still be a hydromel it's not a hydromel if it goes over 7% generally. We have our must. We need to now add our yeast. I'm going to add one gram. I only need one gram of yeast for this. Five grams would be overkill. Here's my one gram of yeast. I'm gonna go pitch it in right on top. I could have rehydrated it. I'm deciding not to right now. Rehydrating your yeast does help them wake up faster. That's not the end of the world for me right now. So I'm gonna shake this up just a little bit. The yeast will wake up, start fermenting on this. Let me give you a couple of disclaimers, uh, things to consider when making a hydromel. They're low ABV, which means there's a likelihood or a chance that there could be some bad bacteria that take over. Very important to um, make sure and sanitize everything well. We are going to let this go through the primary and then it will, of course, ferment through all of the sugars that we have. After the primary, we will cut up our apples and we're gonna put them straight in. Now. Um, one thing with the apples to help increase flavor, you can actually take and um, freeze and you know chop them up and then freeze them, which kind of 
when you freeze the cell, when you freeze them, they explode. So the uh, cells within the fruit actually give more flavor. So that's probably what I'll do. I'll cut these up, I'll freeze them, and then we'll put them into the mead. Now you can do this also in a bucket, a fermentation bucket. I'm not going to for this sake. So let me put an airlock on, write down my uh, information on this, and we're gonna let it go through the primary fermentation. Or after the primary, it has been roughly about three weeks since we started this thing. It sat for a little while longer. I know it's done fermenting for two reasons. Two. Uh, first one is I've done a gravity reading. Starting one, starting gravity is 1.040. Final gravity or ending gravity currently is 1.000. So we are leveled out. It is finished through all the um, honey. Our next step is going to be to add the apples. So what I'm gonna do, I've already cut up my apples and I froze them to help impart flavor better. Uh, I am going to take and shove a bunch of these apples into this clean carboy and then we're gonna rack on top of it. So let me do that real fast. Here we are, here's our apple hydromel. We are now going to take this and put my information back on it. So, you know, what I've added, which is one and a half uh, pounds of apples. This will re-ferment because the yeast are still gonna kind of be in there. So the yeast will kick up again. We're gonna see uh, uh, somewhat of an increase in the ABV of this, a small amount at least. This will sit for two weeks impart apple flavor, we'll come back, rack it off of this, and then do some acid blend adjustments and our priming sugar to carbonate it. So let me be back, or let's fast forward now to about two weeks from today. All right, the apple hydromel has finished. It's secondary fermentation. The apples have been in here for two weeks. We're gonna go ahead and rack it over. We're gonna do a taste test and do some things. Let me rack it off of these apples real fast. All right, we have finished moving it over. This is what it looks like currently. And this right here is what it looked like before I had racked it over. So our next step, since we just moved it off of here, we are going to take, and we're going to back sweeten this thing. The thing with back sweetening is, we're gonna use a combination of two things. We're gonna use erythritol, which is a natural um, sugar that the yeast can't eat or consume. So they will not ferment on this, meaning, it's safe to back sweeten with without stabilizing. We are also going to add some honey that will be our priming sugar. Honey is just like any other sugar. It is fermentable by yeast. So this is what will allow us to have carbonation. I am going to add all of my erythritol, ooh, fun word to say, to taste real fast. Wait, I forgot to do a taste test. Ooh. Very juicy. Um, the apple's a pretty mellow flavor. It definitely got fermented on, so it doesn't have a lot of sweetness from the apple. But you can tell it's like a very light apple juice. I think with some sweetness, the you'll will really pronounce the apple flavor. Hey, let's add our erythritol and hopefully pronounce that apple flavor more. I have finished adding all of my erythritol. I added six tablespoons in total and got it up to 1.005 um, gravity. So we added just a little bit of gravity. Let me tell you what I'm tasting. Yeah, it's not too sweet. It's got just a, just a little bit of sweetness to help um, pronounce that apple character that we really like. The yeast did an incredible job of retaining the honey character. And so I really like this yeast choice. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and actually pour this into this bucket right here, which is gonna be our bottling bucket, but we're gonna use this, I'll clean it off, but this is a funnel that has a grate at the bottom. The grate helps to catch any floating particles. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of here because there are some floating particles within this. Now that we're out of this bucket, we're gonna add 1.07 ounces of honey based off of this formula I found online. That equals the same amount of priming sugar as I would normally need. Woo. So I'm gonna use that. Um, and if you want to use that conversion chart, I'll put that down below. But you don't wanna over um, bottle carb something or you don't wanna overly, or you don't wanna add too much priming sugar because you'll create bottle bombs. So make sure you use an accurate measurement. Here's our one ounce of priming sugar that we will use to bottle carbonate these instead of force carbonate. 
forced carbonation methods include using a kegging system and I don't have that and I don't want to do that. So I'm forced carbonate or sorry, bottle carbonating with it. Let me add all of my stuff. All right, we've bottled them. I have seven, well, I got seven and three quarters of a bottle. This one's not enough, has some air on it. So I'm just gonna drink it. Um, but seven total bottles. These are gonna bottle carbonate because of the priming sugar, AKA honey that we added in this. Should take about two weeks, hopefully, for them to bottle carbonate. We're gonna come back and do a taste test. So let's let them finish bottle carbonating. All right, and here we are. Time to taste test this apple hydromel. Now, uh, I'm calling it the Wild Barb, Barbarian, and I'll throw the label up to show you. I think I already did that earlier, but this thing has sat for three weeks and it is hopefully bottle carbonated. Let's find out. Oh, there we go. A little bit of that carbonation in there, not a huge hiss. We definitely have some carbonation. I'm gonna go and pour it, but I wanna get close up so you can see it. All right, so this is what it kind of looks like. Ooh, there we go. Pretty lightly carbonated, but it's definitely still carbonated. It's got a little bit of that. It's not super fizzy. Let's go ahead now and try it. Okay, so let's taste test it. Again, it's not super carbonated, but I think that's okay. The aroma on it's nice. You definitely have the, the bright floral note. Ooh, I like the level of carbonation. It's just enough to make it a little sparkling, but it's not too heavy. The apple side, it's very prevalent, very, it's um, popping quite a bit. It, it, I mean, it has a very apple juice-esque vibe to me because it's apple, but it has that nice sweetness uh, alongside the apple character. One thing I like about this a lot, it does feel pretty full bodied for only being, you know, maybe about 7%. It is, I think because of the apple, uh, the tannins within the apple and the skin that we used when we put the apples in, it has filled out the body and made it feel more full. It doesn't feel like a 7%. It feels like eight or nine to 10. This thing's really refreshing. And I, I mean, I really like this. I do realize some of you might be watching this going, you should have used apple juice as your base, which you can, absolutely. And I'm not saying no to that. What I am saying is that I, I'm a pretty firm believer that if I'm gonna make an apple mead, I'm gonna put real apples in. So what I could have done would have been to put apple juice as part of the base and then of course put apples on top. I think I already mentioned this before though, the apple juice has sugars. So you couldn't really, unless you watered it down, you couldn't really make just an apple juice, just an apple juice base without, and, and um, have room to add honey. You'd surpass your hydromel 7.5% below range. So that's, part of the reason why I did not use apple juice. Mm. This is, I really like that, the carbonation level. I know it's not super strong, but it's enough to give it a little more kick. Fill up the body. The sweetness is awesome. I just dipped my arm in some honey. And um, it's just really good. So I would highly recommend this amongst the other three that I made, a pear, a banana, and then a traditional hydromel. Those are uh, also gonna be on the channel. There's a video called The Flight Night where me and some friends get together and we taste test these and just kind of have some fun. So check out that video too. Um, I have enjoyed this quite a bit. Feel free to make this recipe if you like it. And you know, if you want to adjust something on it, go for it. In reality, you making this mead in your own fashion is what's gonna be best for you. It's one thing to follow a recipe. It's also okay to take and alter the recipe just a little bit. If you're just starting to make a mead, like your first time brewing, I'd probably stick to the recipe. When you get more experience, then start to go crazy. This thing's fantastic. I um, honestly wouldn't change anything about it. I think the sweetness level's great. The apple character is awesome. It's got the nice carbonation. Just an overall great mead. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Go check out the other three and make sure to hit like and subscribe to support the channel, do all that stuff. Um, yeah, go make a mead and go support your local meaderies and do all those things. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you guys next time in another video. Cheers. Cheers.